people who lack relationship with God, mm -hmm. that's why it's controversial. Yeah. People who don't understand or don't have a love for God or right. who don't live for God, it becomes controversial. There it is. And say, say that again. People who don't have a love for God or don't live for God, it becomes controversial. And I think about when you first get saved and you get into the church and you don't really have an understanding at first. Yeah. You, you can ask questions like, well, why are they asking for this money and why I got to give this, you know? Fitness in the gyms. Some people like to go gambling. Mm -hmm. Some people want to go to the beauty shop more than give to the church. Nails, Some people feet. get the hair and nails and feet done. All <laughs> we the know our hair costs money, whether it's ours or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not against any of that, but what I am for is the principle of giving yeah. because God commands us to do it. Open up our minds tonight, God. Open up our hearts tonight, God, to receive your word, oh God. Father God, give us understanding, oh God. Father God, have your way most of all in us tonight, God. Father, we realize that if you just speak, it'll be all right, oh God. If you just speak. Speak, oh God, everything will come to pass, oh God. So God, we thank you tonight. And once again, Father God, we commend this service into your hands, oh God. Lift us all up where we belong at in you, God, on tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus. Bless everyone under the sound of our voice, oh God. Lord, whatever the need is on tonight, God. Lord, we touch and agree that your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray and let everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so yes, worthy, you are, God. God. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The purpose of our Bible study, as we like to bring forth each and every week, is three different things. Number one is to increase our biblical literacy about the Lord. Number two is to elevate our spiritual consciousness about God and His Word. And number three is to implement an intelligent uh, faith yes. into our lives. Yes. And I'll, I'll say it like this. This is what we say in the IT department, you know, dealing with computers and networks. If you can't tell somebody what you're doing mm -hmm. and how they can do it or give them instructions on how it works, All right. you don't know what you're doing. Okay. Amen? Amen. So when it comes to salvation, and all of the things that revolve around the, the concept of salvation, uh -huh. we are a how-to ministry. Yeah. And we want to help somebody that's out there tonight. Amen? Amen. Tonight's lesson, as we said before, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about the, the principles of giving tonight. And we want everyone to understand that there, there are some, some miseducations about this, some misunderstandings about this. And so what we want to do is go into the Word and give some practical understanding mm -hmm. using the word of God and just from practical living mm -hmm. we have seven years of experience in leading a church congregation yeah so we, we have a lot of things that we can share tonight that are going to be helpful for those who are watching amen amen tonight's topic is you know the, the, the principle of giving ties and offering part two mm -hmm. but but what we specifically want to focus on is mm -hmm. why is tithing so controversial uh-huh Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Shout out to Brother Donald Pope. Shout out to Sister Natasha Carr. And shout out to Brother Reginald Rod Robinson tonight. We're excited about what God is going to bring us tonight in this particular lesson. And I'm excited because I know that there's something wonderful in the Word tonight. Because think of it like this. The Immaculate Conception of Jesus Christ being born of a woman uh -huh. is one of those topics that is highly debated. But guess what is debated even more than that? Mm -hmm. The concept of the principle of giving tithes and offering. All right. So what we want to delve into tonight is why is tithing so controversial, amen? Come on, Pastor. So we want to dive into this topic. And, of course, we, realizing that tithes and offering was first introduced in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, you know, uh, we're no longer under the Old Testament. Jesus fulfilled it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not so fast. Mm -hmm. Because if it's fulfilled then it's just as real now as it was back then. Uh -huh. That's like saying, well, God gave us 
the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. So if you say it's been fulfilled, then that means in the New Testament, we can go out and be thieves. All right, come on, Pastor. I'm just trying to bring you some common knowledge here. You know, that there's, there's no allegorical metaphors here. This is the real deal. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's dive in and let's see what thus says the Lord tonight. I want to begin with a, a, what I call the litmus test of tithing. All right, man. It's, it's a basic verse of scripture that's going to show us something really quick here mm -hmm. and we're going to begin in Matthew chapter number 19 verse number 24 where it says indeed it is easier mm -hmm. for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God mm -hmm. I just want to drop that on you and I want you to think about that for a moment and then we're going to come back to it in just a moment amen, amen. hallelujah so why is tithing so controversial? Tithes and offering, first and foremost, is more than mere money. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. God has a system. And His system allows you to feed what's feeding you. Yes. Because giving is an act of worship. Right. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me just be sarcastic and serious all at the same mm -hmm. time. Because I like, excuse me. I think I got the hiccups. <laughs> Drink something, baby. <laughs> they used to say you're, when you have the hiccups, you're growing. I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> well, I guess we can't grow but out now. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I rebuke that devil right now. <laughs> I need to keep going up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Wide load. Uh, a sign on me. Just walk, walk down the hallway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so let me be sarcastic and serious at the same time. How much is it worth for a ministry to pray for you after contracting COVID-19? Mm. Ponder on that just for a second. <laughs> how, much, how, how much is it worth to you to have some good results in the courtroom? Mm -hmm. You got a lawyer, but you don't have good results. All right. But how much is it worth to you for our ministry to pray for you when you have a lawyer that has failed you. Mm. Hello? Hello. Or, or, or better yet, when you can't even afford an attorney for your legal situation. Mm -hmm. How important would it be to be for us to support you as a ministry, or anybody, by that regards, to support you when you're going through a season of trouble? Mm -hmm. How important and how much is it worth to you to have our ministry, or any ministry, pray for you, mm -hmm. or pray you through when you have been diagnosed with the sickness or disease. Yes. Come on, come on. I want you to think on that. Uh -huh. And then you realize that your faith mixed with our ministry prayers uh -huh. helps you get to the other side and provides for you a testimony. Yes. You can't really put a price on that. Uh -huh. Like people say, I'm a cancer survivor. Uh -huh. Well, you're not a cancer survivor without some prayer. Somebody prayed at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to have some faith at some point in time. Because yes. when the cancer hit, you knew that there was somebody bigger than cancer. Uh -huh. Amen? Yes. So you ended up tithing and offering your prayer. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. How much is it worth to you to have somebody pray for you or to, to support you and shepherd you uh -huh. as a ministry in a situation where we have evidence mm -hmm. already uh -huh. of answered prayer? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I'm trying to put all of this in perspective as we deal with the controversy of tithes and offering. Understanding that tithes and offering is more than just money. Because you, you got to plant a seed at some point. But that seed is going to also produce a harvest. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why the Bible says in Psalms 92 and 13, those that be planted in the house of our God shall flourish. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. There's a reason why that verse of scripture is pertinent tonight. you got to plant a seed of faith on the thing that you're looking for from the Lord. And it's not always just about money. Now let's talk about money, since most people want to go there. Yes, yes. When, when it comes to giving finances, money, time, uh -huh. effort, uh -huh. etc., we all are a little bit different. Uh -huh. In the case of money, for some of us, we don't have that much money. Uh -huh. So it's easy to have faith, mm -hmm. 
because you don't have very much else to rely upon. Mm -hmm. But for people who are quote unquote wealthy, mm -hmm. I didn't say rich, I said wealthy, mm -hmm. and there is a difference. We're rich, mm -hmm. we're not wealthy. Mm -hmm. Rich means you have the ability to go out and make money to pay for everything you got. Wealthy means you have generations of money stored up and when you're gone, the money's still going to be here. Somebody catch that tomorrow. I get it. If you're already living in a state of poverty, what we call being broke, then it's not very hard mm -hmm. for you to have faith for God to bring you something else because you don't have much. Mm -hmm. If you're wealthy, mm -hmm. notice the distinction. If you're wealthy and you're going through a hard time, sometimes you can prop yourself up with your money. I'm going to put that scripture up again because we're getting ready to dive into it. I'm going to let you just marinate on it for a moment as we get to that scripture. Mm -hmm. Some people can prop themselves up with their money mm -hmm. because they receive inheritances. Some people have received properties. Some people have had, you know, they've had the ability to have things handed down to them. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. black people who came to America... We, 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 we have Caucasians here in America who have 500 plus years head start on us. Mm -hmm. When they leave stuff to their children, it's because the wealth was established on our backs. Right. But we serve a God uh -huh. who, can, who can do anything but fail. But fail. Come on. And, and we have to understand his principles if we really want to be successful. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's dive into this Matthew 19 and 24 just for a moment. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at what's called a hermeneutical metaphor because it says it, there's a needle here. The needle that's talked about here is re referencing the doorway to the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. If you look back in the antediluvian days, what we call the Bible days, mm -hmm. then what it's referring to here is, you know, how the cities will be locked down all around and they'll only have this door and the door was actually pretty much a gate. Mm -hmm. it, it was called a needle gate. Right. And, and it's for the purpose of security. The only way in or out, you would have to go through the needle gate. Mm -hmm. A human being could walk right through it. Mm -hmm. But a camel had to be stripped of all of its saddlebags, had to be stripped of its backpacks, had right. to be stripped of all the tools and the stuff that was on it. And then that same camel would have to get down on all fours. Right. And as he's down on all fours, he would have to inch his way through, almost like a caterpillar, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He had to enter. Mm -hmm. And it was as if the body of the camel was piercing or threading a needle. Mm -hmm. Now the door was oversized for a human. Mm -hmm. Humans could walk right through it, but it was undersized for a camel. Mm -hmm. That's why the camel had to break down. So for many of us, you know, depending on our status, we might not have to strip down of anything and rely on anybody because we can prop ourselves up with the money. Right. But there are others who are not as, as as financially wealthy as other people. And some of us have to rely on faith. Mm -hmm. And we plant a seed to produce a harvest to the thing we're looking for from the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you're broke, you basically got to have faith to keep from starving to death. Yeah, hello. Hello? Mm -hmm. When you got money, mm -hmm. you can always eat. You, you're not wondering where your next meal is coming from. Yeah. So you're not apt. To have anybody pray for you. Hello. You know, you're not worried about where your next meal is coming from because you already got what you need. Mm -hmm. But just like the camel, we have to shed all the other ideologies, all the belief systems, all the advice, and all the miseducation that we receive because when all else fails, we are only left with our faith. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you have to give God a tithe of your time, a tithe of your prayer. A tithe of your praise, a tithe and an offering, come on, come a on. sacrifice yes, yes. of who you are and offering yourself up as a living sacrifice to God. Because when all of us fails, all you have is your faith in God. And you can't rely on anybody else. And you find out when you don't have any money that there's other things I can tithe or give as an offering to the Lord. Sometimes I can give him my professional talent. Hallelujah. I mean, I want somebody to catch that tonight. Right. If you have questions, we want to see them. I think it's it, this is a good topic, Pastor, because as you were speaking, and I begin to look at the question again, and it says, why is tithing so controversial? But I begin to think, is it really controversial? But then people who lack relationship with God, mm -hmm. that's why it's controversial. Yeah. People who don't understand 
or don't have a love for God or right. don't live for God, it becomes controversial. There it is. And say, say that again. People who don't have a love for God or don't live for God, it becomes controversial. And I think about when you first get saved and you get into the church and you don't really have an understanding at first. And so we have to understand, again, it comes controversial because we lack relationship. We lack what the word of God has to say, you know, and it's important. You know, it's important that you develop a relationship with God. So when the man of God who serves God and says, the Lord put it on my heart for you all to give $20. The Lord put it on my heart to give $50. It doesn't become a, a chore for you. It's not a burden for you. And the only reason it's a burden for you is because you, you may have it, but you don't want to give it. Hello. You know, that's the only thing. That's the only time it becomes a burden, you yeah, know. It is. But other than that, I would just say, you know, give and it shall be given back to you. And then I just want to share this testimony. It is not my testimony. It is definitely Pastor January's testimony. But I watched how quick do, God. Do, do I want it just to be shared? I don't care. You, you be all right. <laughs> it, it, it's all about God, right? Lord, God. have mercy. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Well, we listen to a, a prophet faithfully. Through, he comes on every Monday at 10 o'clock. And he told us that this that God told him to tell the people that some people are going to get a 48 hour miracle, a 24 hour miracle, a 48 hour miracle and a 72 hour miracle. Well, the, I don't know if it was the day before the I think it was a day before or the night before pa pastor said, I'm going to give a seed into this person's ministry. And I was like, okay, but he wouldn't tell me how much yet, you know? And then when he got done talking, said, okay, I'm going to give this much, babe. I said, okay, that's fine. You know? And then, the next day, literally saints, the next day, pastor sends me an email where the, a job of his said, hey, we owe you a couple of grand. I'm like, wow, you know, we had no idea. This is no joke. We had no idea that we owe, we were to receive this money. Well, it was his money because he worked for the people, but he didn't know because he'd been gone, been left that job. But it just amazes me how God quickly worked, how he quickly worked because pastor gave in a seed offering and then God what did he do quadruple that you know and so I'm just saying saints you know don't if you having problems giving if you having problems paying your tithes <laughs> talk to God about it ask God to deliver you ask God to ask to, to whatever it's hindering you that's keeping you in that frame of mind to take it out and there's some things we have to sanctify ourselves and again we got to let go of some of those Starbucks we got to let go of some of those Mickey D's we got to let go of Red Lobster sometimes. This just so that you can have it to give to the church because you want to prove God. You want those testimonies in your life because you're going to need them. I'm going to let Pastor go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> hey Amen. I was just sitting there enjoying it. <laughs> I'll tell this, you. This is, one of, this, this is one of those topics that I call touchy-feely mm. because people will go out and buy their children $200 pairs of tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. They'll go out and buy expensive dresses for themselves. Uh, they'll go out and buy themselves expensive clothes and cars and houses. I, I watched some people literally in the, in the previous city where I lived in Dallas s several years ago, I watched people buy cars that they couldn't afford just so that they could say, I got a Mercedes, mm -hmm. but couldn't even afford the note. I watched people buy houses knowing that they may or may not be able to pay the, the mortgage. Uh -huh. I watched people buy clothes uh -huh. and keep the tags in and they would stick the tags down underneath here, like under the arm and, 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 and save the pen of the man, wear them, uh -huh. <laughs> take them to the cleaners, take them, take them back to the store as if they never wore them. Uh -huh. And I go, is it really that serious? I've watched people buy what they want and beg for what they need. And it's all because you have to understand that God is not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of principle. That's why people who, who don't even love God, but, but honor the correct principles, are still being blessed. I want you to grab a hold of that. There are people who don't give God any glory. But the Bible says he, he reigns on the just, yes, uh -huh. just as he does on the unjust. And the moment you are, you understand this, you are responsible for it. And this is why most people don't want to be taught these types of principles. Because once you have heard it, you're responsible for it. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're responsible for it, you can't get away with the stuff that non-believers get away with. 
Right. And let me just say this, a disclaimer for anybody out there. You will never be able to follow God. Mm-hmm. Call yourself a Christian. Uh-huh. And say, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Come on, Pastor. I'm saved. Mm-hmm. And think you're not you're not gonna suffer. Come on, Pastor. Suffering is a part of being saved. Yes. It's yes. a part of this whole process. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. And then you you is think about it as going to the bank. You uh-huh. at some point you got to invest in your salvation. Right. At some point, okay? Uh-huh. Now that that look at look at this verse of scripture as well. Proverbs three and nine says it like this. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Yes. Some people only give offerings because it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. If God blesses you to make $2,500 every two weeks, that means $250 should be given to the place that is actually teaching you about the Lord. Right. If you can say, hey, that's my pastor, then you're connected to that church. So you shouldn't have any problem picking up the phone, calling your pastor, asking for prayer. Uh huh. The pastor shouldn't have any problem answering the phone and praying for you. Right, right. The pastor shouldn't have any problem giving you some of his time uh-huh. because you're supporting the ministry. Because you know you're 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 blessing where you're being blessed. Yeah. If I can say it like that. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. You have to feed what's feeding you. Yes. Hello. Hello. And you can't make any withdrawals from God. Mm-hmm. Until after you have made some deposits by faith. Amen. And somebody needs to catch that tonight. Amen. That's why God says, honor mm-hmm. him with your first fruits. Mm-hmm. In other words, mm-hmm. give me mine off the top. He's having enough, my God. What we're trying to teach you tonight is how to get into what's called the overflow. Yes. If you have yes. never experienced the overflow, uh-huh. then you don't understand the principle of tithes and offerings. Right, right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's the real difference between the tithe and the offering. Yes. yes. And, and there are those of us who are more disciplined in this thing. Mm-hmm. And we realize something. Mm-hmm. I cannot afford not to give. Can't afford not to give. Because giving is an act of worship. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And, and I said this in a, in a sermon a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes just obeying God gives us the victory. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hello? Hello. And remember this. You cannot make a withdrawal from God mm-hmm. until or unless you have made deposits mm-hmm. by faith. Yes. Because everything about your faith is a seed. Come on, Pastor. I spent nine months on a sofa mm-hmm. after having a, a bout with Bell's palsy. Mm-hmm. And I, the seed of my faith was that I required healing. Right. Testify. I didn't Testify. need I didn't need a dime. Uh-huh. I didn't need clothes. Uh-huh. I didn't need a house. Uh-huh. Come I didn't need a car. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't even need friends. I needed healing. Yes, yes. But because God saw that the seed of my faith uh-huh. trusted in him. Yes. Uh-huh. And I kept declaring that you know I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. Yes. I'm yes. healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. I'm healed. I'm healed. And then after nine months of declaring I'm healed uh-huh. and sleeping on the sofa uh-huh. and missing my wife, even though she was 25 feet away <laughs> in the next room, I realized something. Mm-hmm. I was tithing God a sacrifice of my prayer, a sacrifice of my praise, a sacrifice of my belief. Some of us don't believe. Mm. Some of us just don't believe. Hello? So true. That's so just the true. truth. That's just the and we're so afraid to test our belief. Mm-hmm. That's so true, Pastor. That is so true. That that that, that, that that's the conclusion of the matter. Yeah. You know, the, the Bible says to fear God and to keep his commandments. Yes. But people have lost the fear of God, so therefore they yeah. don't believe God. They that's don't right. believe that what he says is gonna come to pass because they don't fear God. And and God doesn't want us to be scary in that part, uh, uh you know, about him, but he wants us to have a, a reverence, enough respect to know that if you read the word of God, it should get it down into your spirit yeah. and you should want to obey it. You can't look at what everybody else is doing. Well, what is the word of God is saying to you? Yes. You know, and if he said, wherein have men robbed me? He said, you guys have robbed me. We have robbed him in tithes and in offerings. That's right. You know, so, but he said, but prove me now. Here with said the Lord. And see when I open up the windows of heaven yes. and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. 
but you need to first prove him. That's right. Prove him, and you prove him by saying, Lord, I get paid every two weeks, 10%, I'm going to give to you. That's right. Whether it's your gross or your net, it don't matter. Just give the Lord 10%. When you have the offering, an extra offering, an extra 5 or $20, give that on top of it. Yeah. You know, just be a giver. It pays to be a giver. My husband is such a giver. When we first met, I'm just like, wow. You know, he just gives. He does for people. He just loves to give. We had the opportunity to go to Louisiana one year for Christmas. And he had on his mind, I just want to give to the community, the kids. We got to get to a store yeah. so we can just give every kid a present. I don't want no kid to not have a present from us. Yeah. And I was just like, wow. You know, what a, what a beautiful heart. He's helped me to open up my heart more because I believe in tithes and offering, but I wasn't there. I'm like thinking about, okay, every kid in the community, you know, but but he's just <laughs> that type of person, you know, he'll just do for anybody. He goes over to a certain part of this uh, area here in Portland, Oregon, and he meets the homeless and he gives them. He, he called me today, babe, I'm getting ready to go down and, and give some coats. You got any coats you want to give away? I'm like, well, yeah, look at this coat and that coat in the closet. Go ahead and give it to him. And then I said, and there was a really nice one. Well, he said, you just got this out the cleaner. I said, babe, I'm not going to use it. Give it to yeah. give it to somebody that that that's, that needs it, you know. And uh, but, it, but it touches my heart because I just said, if I can just give, because that at the end of the day is what makes me happy. That is what yeah. fuels my energy in God is being able to do for others. Amen. And and when we know that COVID shut the whole world down, yeah. you know the the celebrities realize they can do nothing with their gift. Yeah. They can't go, they can't tour, they couldn't do nothing with their gift, but get somewhere and sit their spirits down. Amen. And and have a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> some some people had some Jesus come to Jesus moments because at the end of the day, it ain't about all the money you got. That's right. It's all about your health. It's all about your right mind. You know. And so I'm just saying all that to say if we put God first. And we begin to understand who he is. It, it doesn't. Be, it, it's not an issue yes. to serve him. It's not an issue to give to him. It's not an issue yes. to pray yes. one for another. It's not an issue because you're doing those things which please him. Praise God. That's right. Why? What? What are some of the benefits of giving? But before I get into the benefits of giving, I want to first talk about if, as we get we're starting. We only got a few twenty minutes left. Uh, I want to first of all talk about. Basically, um, why some people don't give. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about one of the, the main reasons why we should give is found in Malachi 3 and 11. I'm going to come there and then I'm going to give you five benefits. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why some people don't give. First of all, we have seven years of, of pastoring and co-pastoring experience. Yeah. Seven years of leading a spiritual formation. Uh -huh. and, and 1 Corinthians 9 and 14 says it like this. You know, basically as a preacher, we're supposed to live off of the gospel preach. Mm -hmm. So even so have the Lord ordained that they which preach uh -huh. the gospel should live of the gospel. Yes. In other words, let me let me give you the translation of what that really means. Mm -hmm. It is God's plan that the ministry that feeds the people will be supported by the people who eat at the table. Right. right. Amen? Amen. But Amen. because people don't give, like God has ordained us and kind of called us to. Uh -huh. we, people like me have to be what's called bivocational pastors. Mm -hmm. That means I got to work the same number of hours as you every week. Right. And then come on Wednesday night and lead a Bible study. Mm -hmm. Get up on Sunday morning and preach, uh, 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 preach, uh, preach a sermon. Preach and sometimes it's so tiring, it forces me to ask my beautiful wife to preach on second Sundays. That's what I need her to preach because guess what? If I'm working as many hours or more than some of you and still doing all of this mm -hmm. and still marketing the ministry, sending you invites and stuff like that, when do I have time to rest? I got time to rest. No more time to rest than you do. As a matter of fact, I have less time to rest right. than you do. And many times, preachers have to be what's called bivocational because uh -huh. visitors, members, friends, and everybody who's viewing, they don't always give. People don't always support. So God has to bless us so much mm -hmm. that we're able to handle it when the other people don't give.